Hey everybody, welcome to the very first episode of Tim's Tutorials. Uh, today we are going to discuss how I mounted our Cardo Pack Talk bolts onto our Climb TK1200 helmets. Um, there are a couple ways of doing so. Um, on our helmets, uh, I, I mounted one a little bit differently than the other. This is my helmet, and as you can see, there is I'm using the, the hockey puck mic, as they, they call it. Um, it's hidden in the cheek pad. It's kind of a cool little setup. And then as far as Marissa goes, as a backup, I still installed the cheek pad microphone, but I can hear her much clearer when she uses her boom mic. Uh, so I'm going to show you how I installed both the systems on both of our helmets and how they work. So right out of the box, this is kind of what you get. You get the uh, the unit itself, the Pack Talk Bold, which is a fairly slim design, which is awesome. It comes with a little FM antenna that I am sure that uh, I will never use, but that is a good feature. It comes with the mounting bracket. Uh, you can use the C-clip that would go in between the shell of the helmet. Um, and there's also, you can uninstall this and put on an adhesive one. I just like the, the C bracket better because it just seems like a more permanent uh, fixture. Uh, you get two awesome JBL speakers, which has a much better sound quality in my opinion than some of the, uh, some of the competitors. And then you get two uh, mics. You get the boom mic, uh, goes in front of your mouth, and then you get the little, you know, a lot of people are calling them the, the hockey puck mic that you can, that you can hide within the helmet. So. Um, the first step is to remove the the little collar here, right, um, from the helmet itself. Uh, the the Klein helmet is actually pretty cool. Uh, my other helmet that I had had a little pin lock that would go into a tiny little hole, and that's what kept it in place. And that little nipple, if you will, would always break off, and then this would kind of not stay in place and would always kind of be a hanging variable. But this one is is nice because it's this little gusset it's this little you know seal that you know you you put in there pretty tightly and it it uh it, it's not going to come out so the first step is to take your c bracket if that's the way that you chose to mount it and you want to place it in a, a a way where it doesn't uh interfere with the closing of your helmet so you might want to you know take a a quick visual look of if it's going to impede on anything. You don't want it too far back on the left of your head because then reaching controls will be quite difficult. So once that slips on, then you have an option. Um, if you put this C channel back in, in my opinion, it, it kind of puts these small little wires at risk. Uh, the small wires that would go underneath are now going to be kind of shimmied against the C channel itself. And in my experience, those have begun to fray in the past. And so my way of getting around that, you can go completely, quite literally, around it and underneath the whole cheek pad, but I'm not the biggest fan of that because they're still exposed. And so on my helmet, you can see what I did is I actually went through the, the the padding and all I did was take a little sharp tool like so a little sickle and and jab a hole through it. I was kind of not all excited to do that at first because it's a brand new helmet and the last thing I want to do is stab it but I think in the overall quality of the helmet it is a better option and will will last longer and doesn't uh, you know, it won't structurally mess anything up. Now, to do so, at least on the TK1200, it's it's got this nice little flap, and then you can see that there's a double stitched on the reinforcement. And then in between where that seal is and where the padding is, I try to I try to stab a hole as close to that 
as I possibly can in a location that makes the most sense. So I kind of just visually say, okay, well, I'm gonna put the cables in right here. And then I take my little jabber tool and then this is where things get a little nervous and you physically punch a hole in your brand new helmet, which is, you know, a good thing and a bad thing. If you're thinking long jet, you know, if you're thinking the maximum protection of your helmet, this is, in my opinion, what to do. Uh, you don't wanna cut those gussets because that will actually mess around with the structural integrity of your helmet. And I make the hole just big enough that the wider of the two connectors will actually fit through and then it almost kind of disappears. I don't want to have these wires all knotted up. But then I slip one in and then I slip the other one in. This one's awesome because it's got a square base on it and that square base catches. But with a little bit of love, it should pop through and there it goes. And then now I have a, a, a better, you know, uh, intake into, into the helmet. Now the C, the, the channel little gusset thing will still be interrupted by the C clamp because, you know, I mean, it's a big plastic part, but I am not going to cut on either side of that because then again, this might become loose and so I'm not gonna mess around with that. So I'm gonna leave this kind of loose I've already taken out the, the cheek pad, and, but now I got my two internal wires. This one will go to the speaker itself, uh, to both speakers I should say. And then I'm going to inst actually hook up the mic, but I am going to also install the hockey puck just as a backup, just in case the mic messes up or, or you know something. But when we did a field test before, I preferred the uh, sound quality from Marissa via the, the boom mic. And so she's okay with that. I didn't want to install the boom mic just because when, when there's this little chin guard on the bottom of the helmet and when I had the mic installed for me in my Neanderthal jaw versus Marissa, you know, it would, it would catch the mic on the helmet's way down. So I basically had to like push the mic into my mouth, close the helmet, and then wiggle the mic back out, and that was something that I didn't want to do 4,000 times. So, I chose to go with the hockey puck. But let's start putting some of this goodness together. Um, again, I'm going to use the quote-unquote hockey puck mic and plug it in. And what is really nice about the, the climb helmet on a couple different levels is that on the cheek pad itself, they give you these, it's not a solid back to the, to the cheek pad, right? So on my last helmet, it didn't have these little gussets in the back corner of it. But now since this one does, um, instead of installing the mic up front like that, where the Velcro itself can kind of, you know, chafe against your, your chin, that's where we had my, my mic installed on our old helmets forever ago. But again, the wires, every time you open and shut the helmet, just a little bit of friction every time multiplied by, you know, for in our case, you know, two years on the road at a time, four years total, that, that cord started getting uh, pretty, pretty messed up. So now what I do is this large opening in the pad, you know, you kind of move the foam around and I want the mic to be facing on this uh, exterior wall, if you will. And so I jimmy it in there. And then kind of, you know, manipulate the pad back to its place so that Marissa's um, cheek is nice and comfy. And then I would install it into the cheek pad after hiding the wires just a little bit. But this is our backup for her. So I'm actually going to unplug the hockey puck and plug in the, the boom mic. 
and you get an assortment of velcro and sticky pads that you can find a home for within the the interior of your helmet to find the best placement because the last thing you, you want is for am i doing this right i am uh you know you don't want it to be too far out because then you can't open and shut your helmet comfortably uh, you know, you don't want it to be too far in or it's just always against your mouth. So there is a sweet zone that for each person will have to, you know, find that harmony. Um, but with me, you know, I stuck one Velcro right here and then another little Velcro up here to kind of hold the boom in place where it should. There's a little arrow on the boom itself that tells you where the mic is actual input is and so you want to be sure that that's facing your mouth and not the not the the other way around or else you know it will be a poor communication um so once i have that kind of sort of in place then i can go ahead and put the cheek pad back on with my little hidden mic that you know i'll, I'll just hide hide the wire somewhere nice and special so it doesn't interrupt marissa all right, and with that in place, um, now we can work on installing the, the speakers. And again, Climb did a solid favor because it uh, might be a little difficult to see, but there's this little, behind the padding in the back of the neck is this little square, this little intake where they cut out of the foam. And I don't think that it you know impedes the protect the protectiveness of the helmet but it's a little square where you can stash some of your excess wires um, so that was very thoughtful of them uh, so you plug your speakers into the audio jack and then obviously you have a long and a short side the short side is going to go to the side of the helmet where you installed the cardo um, and then the long side sneaks around and goes into the other ear uh, and again all helmets kind of have their own little recessed holes for um, installing speakers these ones are actually a little bit nicer than the ones in my my old helmet uh, there's a little bit more room to play around with to make sure that you can get things right uh, and again, when you're first installing them, you're probably not going to get the exact location correct the, the first time around. But, you know, don't don't fret. There'll be, you know, plenty of room to, you know, mess around just, just you know, just quarter millimeter at a time. All right. And so once you have both your speakers in their, you know, semi-temporary locations that you'll have to mess around with um, after the fact, is when you can start you know hiding and tucking away some of your excess uh, cables um, I again once again I'm a big fan of Klein because they give you a couple little C channels that after you put the wires in you can actually sneak the the cables into these little gullies that seem like they'll be good you know protection for them and then getting the the helmets collar back on what I've found to be most useful is my my National Park Pass because what you want to do with it is you want to really jimmy that seal in so that that V catches and does not come out um, and you can do that up to and as close to the C bracket as you possibly can to get a nice flush installation and then you know kind of make your cables a little bit tauter and then once you're back on the inside of the helmet is where you kind of sneak some of these cables into a better home just so you know you're not feeling them chafe against your your cheek and clip a couple clips back And you want to make sure when you're putting these little tabs back into the plastic 
uh, holes that you don't crimp any of the wires, obviously, because that would be that would be bad long term. Uh, and then after everything is said and done, there is a pretty good clean install of the unit, the cables going into the helmet, the you know it's not getting in the way of anything you can go ahead and just you know confirm that nothing is impeding but that to me is a pretty good location uh, the mic again you want the the little yellow arrow facing you know where the where you're projecting your voice and and just make sure everything is nice and clasped up and you are good to go so that is the installation with the boom mic with the bonus mic hidden away for worst case scenarios because we have been on the road with our senas and the 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 mic wires had frayed and then you're left with just crackling noises and that's just awful when you're trying to communicate back and forth so i'm hoping that this backup mic if anything does happen to either of our systems, we'll have a mic that we'll be able to, you know, use instead and replace and still be able to talk on the road. So that is how I installed a Cardo Pack Talk Bold onto our Climb TK1200 helmets. And that's Marissa's. You saw it with the boom. And this is mine, where my mic is also hidden right here. And that's my primary mic. And uh, yeah, so far it works fantastic for us. And again, you are gonna have to manipulate those speakers because you're not gonna be able to, the first time, you know, I mean, you figure they're big speakers and they're big holes, but the difference between the speaker being up on whatever you wanna call this part of your ear versus right over your, your, your ear hole, um, it, it's a night and day difference. So hopefully this, helps you there's a little a couple tricks that i hope you got out of it so yeah leave your comments below let me know what you do uh if you have any more tips i by no means am the the only one out there that has some some unique ways and good ways of, of mounting their their intercom so thanks for tuning in everybody and uh, we'll see you next time peace